Let's talk about acute leukemia. In this video, we discuss two major types of acute leukemia, as well as their subtypes and describe their symptoms. There are four main types of leukemia. Acute myelogenous leukemia, or AML, acute lymphocytic leukemia, or ALL, chronic myelogenous leukemia, or CML, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. Notice the two types of acute leukemia, AML and ALL. In acute leukemia, the disease progresses rapidly. And acute leukemia can be either myelogenous or lymphocytic, depending on the stem cell lineage from which the leukemic cells arise. Remember that in the process of hematopoiesis, or blood cell formation, there are hematopoietic stem cells that ultimately give rise to intermediate types of cells known as precursor cells, which eventually differentiate into mature blood cells. In the case of acute leukemia, it is the early precursor cells, also known as blast cells, that acquire genetic mutations, which cause the cells to stop differentiating and start proliferating. Looking at this hematopoietic chart, notice the blast cells. AML is where blast cells of the myeloid lineage are proliferating, whereas ALL is where blast cells of the lymphoid lineage are proliferating. Both AML and ALL have subtypes, and these subtypes can be classified by determining the exact type of blast cell affected. Looking specifically at AML, there could be a proliferation of megakaryoblasts, and this is called acute megakaryoblastic leukemia. A proliferation of monoblasts results in acute monoblastic leukemia. Most commonly, though, myeloblasts are the cells proliferating. These are the precursor cell to granulocytes, and this is known as acute myeloblastic leukemia. There is also a very rare subtype of AML where the proerythroblast fails to differentiate and begins to proliferate, and this can result in acute erythroid leukemia. Usually there is only one type of cell proliferating, but sometimes both myeloblasts and monoblasts are found proliferating, and this is known as acute myelomonocytic leukemia. For ALL, a uh, proliferation of B lymphoblasts is known as B cell ALL, while a proliferation of T lymphoblasts is known as T cell ALL. Sometimes the proliferating cells present with both myeloid characteristics and lymphoid characteristics, and these cases are classified as biphenotypic acute leukemias. With at least one type of blast cell proliferating in the bone marrow, there is less energy and space available for the production of erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. This is why both types of acute leukemia can manifest with low red blood cell counts, low or abnormal white blood cell counts, as well as low platelet counts. What symptoms would one expect to see with fewer erythrocytes or anemia? It would be symptoms resulting from decreased blood oxygen levels, like mental fatigue, muscular weakness, shortness of breath, and pallor. What would one expect to see with fewer neutrophils or neutropenia? Due to a decreased ability to fight infections, one would see frequent and persistent infections occurring systemically. And finally, what would one expect to see with fewer platelets in the blood, or thrombocytopenia? Platelets help the blood to clot, so with fewer of them, any symptoms from decreased blood clotting could be seen. This includes epistaxis, bleeding gums, petechiae, 
ecchymosis are all symptoms associated with thrombocytopenia. One could find all of these manifested in AML and ALL. And though the number of healthy blood cells being produced in the body is declining, at the same time the number of unhealthy blast cells, now referred to as leukemic cells, is rising. And this presents even more symptoms. The, the rapid proliferation and hypermetabolism of leukemic cells affects the hypothalamus and brings about low fevers and night sweats. The utilization of so much energy in producing these le leukemic cells also causes fatigue and rapid weight loss. The leukemic cells continue to build up in the bone marrow, putting pressure on the bone to cause bone marrow expansion and this causes pain and tenderness in bones and joints. Eventually, the leukemic blast cells, these immature precursor cells that are normally never outside the bone marrow, leak into the blood circulation, and this causes increased blood viscosity. Leukostasis occurs when the blast count in the blood is at or greater than 100,000 cells per microliter. At this point, the blood can become dangerously viscous or thick and slows circulation throughout the body and may increase the risk for obstruction of blood vessels. Leukostasis may also occur in the brain and is referred to as cerebral leukostasis that may lead to seizures or coma. This is why leukostasis is a medical emergency and is treated with apheresis. Apheresis is a procedure where blood is drawn from the body and plasma is separated out to remove factors like antibodies, but in this case, blast cells from the blood. If the leukemic blast cells remain in the blood circulation, they can spread to and infiltrate parts of the body. Gingival infiltration is often seen in AML, especially in the acute monoblastic and myelomonocytic forms of AML. Infiltration of the thymus gland and lymph nodes is seen more frequently in ALL. This makes sense because just like healthy lymphocytes, B and T lymphoblasts like to go to lymph organs. CNS invasion can occur in both AML and ALL, and this happens as the leukemic cells cross the blood-brain barrier to enter the brain, bringing about headaches, nausea and vomiting, and papilledema, which is swelling of the optic nerve inside the eye. Here's a summary of the symptoms of AML and ALL. Please remember that acute leukemia has a rapid onset and can become fatal if not treated quickly. In the next video, we discuss diagnosis and treatment of acute leukemia. Thanks for watching.